Okay, so we've decided now that the least squares estimate is as good as you've got. So, and we've got some distributional results. So let's put that together. So we're going to talk about inference for multiple regression. That is, you've estimated your betas. Can we make decisions about those betas? So let's recap. We've got our multiple regression model, y equals x beta plus epsilon. We've got the epsilons are normally distributed to the mean of zero and they vary as a sigma squared and they are have they're independent. The nice thing is we get what we call a pivotal quantity. What that means is we can get a, a random variable that we can use to do ask questions about individual coefficients that we can get entirely from the data but whose distribution does not depend on the parameter ask questions about. If you don't remember pivotal quantities, go back to stats model and inference. But what this means is I can do inference. I can basically say if I take the um, estimate beta hat j of the coefficient beta j, take off the beta j, divide it by the standard error of this estimate, which is SE the square root of cjj, where cjj is the the j diagonal element of our x j x, which if you think about it, because that we know that sigma squared x transpose x to the minus one is our variance covariance of our beta hats, then the variance term will be the ith element. So if I take the square root of that, I get the standard error once I multiply it by my guess of sigma squared, which is S E. Sorry, of sigma, which is S E. Thing is the distribution of that does not depend on beta j. It's a t distribution with n minus p degrees of freedom. And because of that, I can use this to do things like confidence intervals and hypothesis testing. So for example, if I take beta j hat plus or minus a cutoff point, so t n minus p alpha on two, so that is a t distribution, it's the point on a t distribution, it has n minus p degrees of freedom, such that the area at one end is alpha on two, times my standard error, my SE, square root of CJJ, that's a 101 minus alpha percent confidence interval for beta J. Nice. And we'll see when we get to the case study, you just look on your coefficient table and it gives you those numbers. If I wanted to test if beta J equals to zero, then fine. I take my estimate, take off zero, divide it by that standard error, I get a t-value. And if that t-value is large enough, remember rule of thumb is greater than two or less than minus two, then we reject that null hypothesis. And this is really useful because if you think about that linear model, you want to say, does this predictor have a significant effect on the response variable? If the coefficient was zero, no. If it's not, yes. We could also test multiple betas at the same time. So you might have two models, one with a load of coefficients, one that has less coefficients, and you might want to compare these two models and you can do this with what we call an ANOVA test. Um, this is just a bit broken here, but basically I think it's getting squished on the screen. Go and look at the PDF. But you can take your sum of squares for your smaller model and your fuller model and compare them, and you get an F value, and you can look that up on your F value. That's a very complicated form there but we'll see some examples in the case study to illustrate that what about if i want to do prediction now remember there's two sorts of prediction that i can do well no there's one sort of prediction two sorts of prediction intervals and when i say prediction intervals one's a confidence interval one's a prediction interval so i think now i've confused you enough let's go through it slower let's imagine i've got my multiple regression model i've got a new observation with these predictors and i'd really like to know why zero and we're going to assume that basically the data we had before shouldn't affect this new observation. Well, the first thing I could do is I could say, what's the average response variable? So the expected value of that response variable for every single subject with those predictor values. That's what we call the 101 minus alpha percent confidence interval. So you basically, you take your beta hat, you use that in your formula and your um, predicted values to get your point prediction, which is 
our eta zero hat and plus or minus our cutoff and then here is our standard error of this confidence interval if i wanted instead of going what's the average of all the subjects i wanted to go just give me a range for a single subject what we call a prediction interval so now i'm just talking about a single one i adjust this to have that extra bit because you think about it averages vary less than individuals so this extra individual is going to vary a bit more and i need to incorporate that somehow in this margin of error term and if you look there it is this extra one in there Everything else should be if I typed it right. Yeah, is exactly the same except for that one. This is the confidence interval. This is the prediction interval. And you'll see that when we look at confidence intervals, they are always narrower than prediction intervals because prediction intervals are about an individual. Confidence intervals are about the average of everyone with those predictors. So hopefully a lot of that is just the theoretical recap of what you've seen before but what i'm going to do now is i think the way to really consolidate that is we're going to do a case study we're going to look at rubber and we're going to have a couple of predictors and we're going to show how to do this in r and also see all these things actually in a you know a proper analysis so they make a bit more sense do that next time see you next time